I love the. <laughs> That's the badge for the. It's got to stay there. There's a few things that just haven't gotten done yet. Of course. So come on. You think Ken's gonna join us for this, or is this just me talking about my car? I actually like your car. Huh? You actually <laughs> like it. Wait, hold on. Let's unpack this. Not like your that. car's dope, but you had to caveat that you actually like. I actually I like it. Anyway. Wait, I know something you'll love to hear. Go it, ahead. It looks blue in here. <laughs> the prophecy is true. If you could just drive around with these very white lights. And All then the time? everyone will know the true <laughs> color. Is. Yeah. I, that name of that color in that light is called true white, which makes that true blue. Oh my God. Anyway, here we are. Your car is complete after 17 years from the first time you laid a wrench on it. Perfectly on schedule. <laughs> this is the trajectory. I always have planned for it. But let's be honest. <laughs> That was 17 year trajectory was the plan. 17 where, year trajectory. Yeah. All you these somehow knew that garages. this kit was coming. See, right, that right. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that was a big part of it. There wasn't a good kit for the car. That's true. So you just have to That's buy true. and wait. You just wait. Well, I actually have to go home. But I haven't go even to, gotten into the history of my car and the backing I, into you know like. How many times I've heard this? Have you ever listened though? <laughs> like in all the times all I've right, talked so about my car. Have, Ken, have, have you, have you ever actually right listened now. to we what I said? We got to look at this car. <laughs> and let's be honest, Brian can talk about Audis to himself yeah. all day, so we don't we don't really. I've got to go guy. home so I could pack and leave for SEMA. And right. thank you again, Toyo, for having our cars in the SEMA booth. All joking aside, it was cool to actually build these two cars together ten years yeah. ago. I built my 911, and Ken had his Ford. It's a chair, though. And we <laughs> you guys see brought that them chair? to SEMA. The chair is really dope. You should check them out. They're stamped. They got the little certificate. Do you want to just Yo, look at the car? Let's go look at the car. Don't even try to, to pretend like I won't just keep talking. I don't need these chairs. I don't need anyone. So anyway, it all kind of starts in around 1978. This is a monumental situation we have on our hands right here. Brian Scotto has finished an Audi. It's not finished. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. I, I figured. It's SEMA ready. It's, it's SEMA ready. This is SEMA ready. No. It'll never be done. Any good no. project car is never done. Realize that like, we literally finished this car. It's not finished, but we got the car to where it is right now about five hours ago. Which was hours? A... You're still applying oh, graphics. No, no, we were, it forget graphics. In. We did the exhaust this morning. <laughs> Yeah, so it leaves for SEMA in like 10 minutes, and uh, yeah. But I mean, would you just look at it? Just look at it. Just take a second. Just enjoy all the blueness that's coming through your lens right now. Anyway, where do we start? The headlights. Start at the headlights? Let's start at the headlights. Because honestly, anybody that's seen this car for years and years and years, almost two decades, has seen it with different headlights. It, but now... Right, because factory had a brick light. Factory, there was a 90s style brick light. And then... Well, as a 90s boy, dual rounds are just... Euro hill climb. Like, rally. Rally. They always change yeah. rally cars over yeah, yeah, dual yeah. rounds. So... I know you were on the fence. I was. I, I went and bought these, which you'll see in an upcoming show. I took these guys on a little bit of a mission while we were in Germany to go get these headlights. They're super rare, Votex dual rounds. And yeah, I think they actually kind of bring the whole thing together. It was a worthwhile mission. It looks really, really good. All right, so you, you want to walk around it and figure it out Let's real quick? Let's walk around it. To start, it's a 1990 Audi Coupe Quattro, but what makes it look so wild right now is the prior design kit. So prior design, company based out of Germany, who normally do things like Lamborghinis and stuff, decided they wanted to build a crazy kit for the Coupe Quattro. Of all and, cars. Yeah, yeah, and they did it with my buddy Ruven and JP, so um, obviously I had to get one as I got one here. This is actually number nine of 40. It's a limited edition kit. Looking at it, it adds a lot. The tire is literally twice the size of the old tire. Look at how much you've added. Look at all this. 
I mean, this is where the body used to be, and this is where it is now. You have an intake. Like that much wider. Right here. So this kit did two things for me, and the first one was actually a functional purpose, which was I always wanted to run a bigger tire on here, because the goal was to build this to be a hill climb car, and uh, previously, the biggest I could fit after even just stretching the hell out of the fenders was a 235. This, right here, right now, 315s. 315 square. Toyo R888Rs, which is a nice already square and boxy tire. I would say they fit pretty good. And then the number two thing was that it gave the car this like super aggressive look that I feel like the Coupe Quattro never had. Even the S2, which was the performance version of the Coupe Quattro, never looked anywhere near as tough as a Sport Quattro. And that's what you get here. I mean, if you compare the two, it has the same sort of inlet on the hood, has the same vents over the turbo, has the same cutouts to the front bumper to let as much air as possible through to the intercooler. And even the rear kind of steals some cues from the side vent and the side indent on the Sport Quattro. The rear, as you get all the way around, quite a bit different, has like a more modern style diffuser on it. And then really setting it off for me are the wheels. Because I know Ken's episode may have dropped first and you may have seen these wheels first on Ken's car, but. That's how he, you know, that's how he tries to own that's, his That's wheel. why he did it that way. That's why yeah, he did it yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But really, we went to Audi Tradition in Germany on our second trip and they have everything you could think of from Group B days including the original Sport Quattro wheels, which inspired this wheel yeah, build I'm with I'm pretty Rotoform. sure these were S1 and E2 wheels, and these were the hollow spoke magnesium wheels that at the time were a 15 inch. We've upsized them, kind of the, the concept and the inspiration of them to an 18. 18 by 12. Yeah, 18 you by 12. Gotta hit them with the by 12. With some crazy offsets. Super deep dog bowl right here. I wanted them to put the branding on the front, which actually is like Hoonigan size specs and rotiform on it, just because like it's such a weird motorsports thing to do. Like most people wouldn't think like, oh, let's just put all the information you need to know about the wheel Usually on the Usually that's spoke. on the back of the Usually spoke. it's on the back, yeah, this but like in racing, they're like, I didn't make it so it's easy to You're read. You're chucking put wheels around, you gotta know. That's a really nice touch. And I think that fitment and this chunky tire look with that wheel, like, dude, it's everything. And the car looks almost shorter now too. It does, although what's really crazy if you look at is there's marks from when Ken's car was here. So this is hub center for the front of the Sport Quattro. Oh, dang. And this is hub center for the back of the Sport Quattro. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that, you know, 12 plus inches of how much shorter his car is. Yeah. Since we're over here right now, we yeah. gotta let him know that This history. sticker came on the car <laughs> when I bought it. I bought this car out of Rhode Island and it had the Museum of Yachting and it just seemed like that sticker just had to stay on it. I'll be honest, the front looks cool. But for me, it's all about that rear three quarter angle. Cause like the stuff that they did with the kit, the way this bumper lives right here in this vent, the way it comes out off the tail light, this looks hard, man. And you kept a factory wing. This morning, Soupy literally made that two hours ago, that exhaust. It's an upswept ovalized DTM. It's just for a 90s yeah, car, of course. I think like you have to have that kind of upswept of DTM vibe, it's just something really different. It's sitting on KW Motorsport coilovers. It's got Porsche 996 front brakes and Porsche Cayenne rear brakes. A little smaller than what Ken has, but they seem to work pretty well. So you wanna we get inside? There's not a whole lot going on in there. There's not much going on inside, but let's get after it. Buddy Rob Parsons with the Cage Kits kit. Yeah, so realize I'm big, right? Six foot eight, and I needed to fit in this car with a helmet and be able to pass tech, which means that I need about two inches of clearance from the top of my helmet to the bottom of the roll bar. That's a really difficult thing to do. So first we had to find a seat that I could fit into, and that was the Sparco Pilot. This is the tallest seat available in the game right now. Like there's nothing else that's this big unless you build a custom seat. And as a tall person, because I was going to run halos, realized in a regular race seat, the halos are like on my shoulder and the halo needs to be up here. So this is actually tall enough for someone like me. And then we had to build a cage around it. So 
Rob Parsons came in and 3D scanned the whole interior and built this as tight as possible. So you know how everybody loves to put gussets between their A-bar and their A-pillar? Um, this one doesn't have any, and that's because that's a brag. That right there is a super hard flex that you don't need a gusset because the actual pipe so strong. is welded to the bar. Yeah. It's too welded to the A-pillar. Like you don't need to gusset it because the weld is right here. Right. So like normally you have to gusset it because the cage doesn't fit that tight. So yeah. if you're trying to put it all together, does incredible it work. welds all the way through. The welds are all the way up through the back. Like everything is welded to the body where it can be to make it as stiff as possible. Has the FIA bar. So this is basically like a, trying to go for hill climb spec. It's tough. There's really no sanctioning body to work with. So, so you overbuild. So you overbuild, you build so that you're gonna pass tech. So this is pretty much like a ARA legal um, rally cage. Um, Cause figure if you fall off the top of Pikes Peak, I wanna come home to my kid. Personally, I think it's cool that you have a car that fits you. I know, I can actually, you know, I always get into other people's cars. Oh God, it's brand new. It's a little tight. <laughs> Gotta get into this thing. I know. There we go. Let's go center. As you can see, like how low I sit in this car. Still room for a helmet. You know what's so weird? The first time I sat in the car, I was like, I this feels so weird because I've never been this low in a car. Before. And that far back. And then yeah, I realized yeah, yeah, that this yeah. is how everybody sees. <laughs> like I'm like, well, the steering wheel's in my way. Cause I'm used to sitting like this in a car and it's like, oh, I guess this is you're how you're sitting supposed over to it. sit in a car. Yeah. It's down like this. And That's then crazy. handbrake. And then right now I've got this uh, H speed shifter, which is connected to an O1E like S4 box, but um, V2 of this, which I already have, it's already at the shop, paddle shift with a dog box. Do. So I have a drive sport dog box along with an MME paddle shift that's going in it. But I figured I'd start with the regular trans, which is a nice short shifter and a tall shifter. So that way I can tune the car, get it sorted like that. But as you'll notice, there's a bunch of other things missing, including a dash. I didn't get to that. SEMA problems. I do like another Audi tradition inspired thing. Power steering in the back. Right, I've got uh, electric power steering out of a Toyota MR2. And I put it behind me just to move any weight I possibly can back towards the back of the car. I love the. That's the badge for the back. It's gotta of the stay there. There's a few things that just haven't gotten done yet. Of course. So. I'm not touching the hood because I don't know how it's fast. Get the bat. Get the bat. That's that's pretty good. I did it. Of course, that's what I was doing last night. How are you not gonna stun on people with that? Oh, dude, speaking of stunning, the first thing that hits you, inline five dash turbo. What's the second thing that hits you? <sighs> that it's finished? -ish. Well, except for the lack of one major Listen, thing. Listen, you have the newest technology in Spark. Okay. Bluetooth everything. There's no wiring anymore. Wireless spark. Coil pack, yep. um, injectors, yep. everything is Bluetooth. Brand new intake even technology, the, it breathes through this membrane. I don't even run an ECU, it's all cloud-based now. Explain to me, explain to me. I know, yeah. I know you love explaining. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this looks a lot different from Ken's motor, and it's an inline five. There's all different kind of inline fives. Yep. What, what's this build? So this is a traditional 3B, right? So I'm using a 3B head and a 3B block, right, inline five cylinder setup. And this actually came out of an Audi 200 sedan, which was sold here in the US. We never got the turbo. This car only came NA in America. It did come turbo in Europe. It was called an S2. But this engine right here has the Hank Iroz treatment. So he's gone through this thing. It's got a shit ton of head work. It has a CNC port job on it. It's got everything you can throw at it. So we'll just run through the quick list real quick. Like it's got pistons, it's got rods, it's been punched, it's been stroked. So it's sitting at about a 2.6 liter. It's 2.6. Two six. It's stock at a 2.2. Two. Head's got, you know, valves, titanium, strings, like everything in here is, they've just kind of like gone over and above on from just building, you know, full blown kind of race motor. The engine itself, like most of the tech in the base engine is something that's just, you know, been around for 30 plus years. But what we've done or what we'll be doing is making it from an electronic side be way more modern. So you'll notice 
There's a Bosch 75 mil drive by wire here. It's got a 60-2 crank trigger that's mounted into the rear main seal. It actually runs a HAL style sensor off the old distributor. That basically allows it to run like just way smarter on engine management. So it, it will have, right now I have it in boxes, but it will have a Cyvex uh, ECU in it and a Cyvex uh, PDU, which is what they call a PDM, which basically is uh, like a What's the best way to explain a PDM? It's like a modern day fuse box, right? So instead of having like an actual fuse panel where you blow fuses, a PDM is like a- It routes all sol the It's solid state, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a solid state fuse panel. So the Cyvex setup on this will allow me to do a lot of things you can only do with modern cards. So that's like rolling anti-lag, launch control, all the kind of stuff that's a lot harder to do with the old engines. Um, so those are the types of things I'll be able to build in with Cyvex. It has individual EGRs. So I can on just, each primary, that's yep. one of the first things I noticed when this thing, before it even came in, that's super motorsport looking. Oh yeah, yeah. I love and that. And that just allows you to be able to watch it better, right? So you can yeah. push the car harder if you can monitor every single thing that's happening, right? So yep. if you can sit there and look at everything that you're doing on this side, everything the injectors are doing on this side, have full control of the throttle. And one of the other big reasons why I want throttle control is because right now, sitting behind here is a six-speed O1E trans. This came with a five-speed. Um, this is already an upgrade. It's an S4 trans. I like this trans a lot. It's just like a good basic trans. But as I mentioned, I'm running a drive sport dog box with an MME paddle shifter. But that means that I'm going to need to be able to do things like throttle cut so that the paddle shifter can actually control shift. So all of that stuff, doing that with drive-by-wire is just way easier. Some other things that most people won't notice have been changed on this car, because it's like kind of a little bit more hidden. Every bracket? Well, every bracket has been. Um, I've redone all the brake lines through the whole car, so they're all brand new brake lines. But I actually changed over the, um, the brake system. So the previous brake system was a hydraulic oil system, which like I have no idea why Audi decided to do that in the 90s. It's kind of a nightmare to work on, but this is just a standard booster style. This came out of a later Audi Ultra Performance made and it makes an adapter I was able to use to mount this in. I've got Heim joints from, for my steering rack and my steering rack is an 034 quick ratio special. This has a 2.7. 2.7 turns lock yeah. to lock. Yeah, that's quick. So yeah, that's it's quick. super quick. Yeah, Dang. I think that's as fast or just slightly faster than your Evo, mm. right? It's like similar. Yeah. Um, that's another part that I've owned for 14 years and finally got to <laughs> install in the car. We haven't even talked about the hot side of the car, so obviously we yep. talked about the you know yeah, individual EGR, but I have the Zona Rotor setup, and what's interesting about this setup is that it's shared footprint turbo, which means that you can run about five or six different size turbos, all in the exact same footprint. So what that allows you to do is basically undo this V-band, undo this V-band, swap in a different turbo. So this is what we're calling the little boy. This one right here will put us at about 700 to 750 horse. Hank thinks it's capable of like 11 to 1200 horse on just a turbo alone. That's crazy. Ken wants to run this versus that. You just want a TVT it's that just gonna, it just, I just, just want, want a TVT, a TVT that that's dude. it. So. I love, by the way, how short your piping is to the intercooler. Dude, you have like maybe three feet max of piping. Yep. That's wild. Like just direct shot, boom, boom. And the boom, intercooler boom. is, what you can't really see it, but it's all behind here. It's a Wagner tuning, same kind of style that Ken has, but it's a little bit actually smaller than that. Love the MTM manifold. Shout out to this the guys is, at MTM. This is super rare piece. This is like hen's tooth, rare, 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 rare. Like every time anyone who knows this, I post about it, people are like, holy shit, where'd you get the MTM manifold? Hype beast Audi parts. So um, what else? Tile, uh, wastegate. Went with the adult style routing for the wastegate. Could have popped it through the hood, but you know, 41 years old, you gotta just run it out the back. Eh, it's just a thing. You I know, also kind of like how it makes it sound. Yeah, for sure. I'll be honest, man, at first I was really skeptical on like how the whole thing was gonna come together. Oh, we all were. The, the renderings of these kits always look good, but the reality, a lot of times. <laughs> Yo, render to reality is a it's, hard pill to swallow dude, sometimes. It but. Dude, it's incredible. So 10 years ago, almost to the day, 
You finished your RWB build for SEMA, yep. wide body. And now, 10 years later, this wide yeah, no, body I'm, build. I build one car a decade. Decade That's at a it. time. One SEMA car a decade, yeah. and then it takes like 10 years to like work off that stress. And then you like, you just get to the point where you're like, oh, I, building seat cars for SEMA don't suck. But I didn't actually build this for SEMA. It just you all worked out. You built it for out. you. you built I it built this you. car for me. It just all worked Toyo out. Toyo just gave you a date. But let's be honest, without a deadline, I ain't worth shit in life. <laughs> Like, if you don't give me a deadline to finish something, like, it's not going to get done. Like, That's true. the minute it became work, yeah. like, the minute it was like, if you don't do this, Toyo's going to be upset with you, I got a car done. So if anybody needs a Swallowtail Rabbit built for an event or um, a rail car, if people need rail car no built rail, for no. Let's talk about rail car for a second, because I, no. I think this right. is the Listen, year thank that you. we Shout get out rail Toyo car tires. finished. Shout out to everybody that no, helped make like, this you build happen. Like, Check it out. Build coming soon. Give you an idea how recently this got finished. There's hardware. Just on. You got nuts, hurts. You got screws. Oh yeah, ten? So, nah. Uh, nah. Eight, eight mil. 